Good morning. My name's Malcolm. Really glad to be with you here on the online. Um, I'm the associate leader of Restore Loughton, um, and this is the first time that I've been unleashed onto the online, so buckle in, everyone. Um, I've been uh, part of Restore for about nearly 19 years. They've been trying to get rid of me for a long time, but we keep coming back. And uh, I'll say a little bit more about our, our journey um, a little bit later. If you've been around for the last few weeks, you'll know that God has given us a specific word for 2024. And we've sensed that he's calling us as his people into a year of activation. Over the last few weeks, we've had an opportunity to respond to this word and assess and appreciate the reality of where we've been where we are and where God is taking us um, as we step into, into the future, as his people, as his body. As we approach the end of this teaching series, um, this is the last in a series of six, I'm going to be talking about the raising up of the army. So let's read Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10. The hand of the Lord was on me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as, he, as, I, as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath of life, from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Father God, as we accept and, and rest in this word that you have spoken over us as Restore Community Church, for the beginning of this year, this word of activation. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to speak and move in us as your people. Would you speak this morning? Lord Jesus, would you, would you speak through my words and would you, um, would you confirm what it is that you're speaking at this moment, at this time? In Jesus' name, amen. So a vast army, they stood up on their feet. A couple of things uh, just as we start. The first thing I want to point out is, as an army, we can sometimes get a bit of a negative image of, in our mind when we think of an army, particularly in the current climate. Lots going on at the moment, isn't there? But I think it's important to say, this army looks different to the one we would normally see on the news. It sounds different. The sound of this army is joy and praise. And hopefully as we go through this morning, we can get a sense, a sense and a picture maybe, of the army we're being called into. The second thing to say is an army at certain times needs to reflect. Um, recent reflections by the current head of the British army, as he's outgoing, um, seems 
quite stark. It seems quite stark in its assessment. A bit of a harsh reality, really. I don't know if you've seen on the news, but he, he's saying that if we were to have a ground war, we simply would not be ready. We wouldn't have enough troops. And he's calling the, the government to raise up troops for if that was going to be necessary. Not something that many of us are relishing the idea of. I want to just suggest, maybe, that the church has been in a similar position to the British Army. Maybe the church has not been in a place where it would be ready for a revival to come in this land. Are we? Are we ready? Would we be ready to disciple tens, hundreds, thousands of people if a revival was to come to our land? As we've been, well, as I've been preparing this talk over the last few days, it's been clear that there's a need to assess where we're at. Uh, when God took Ezekiel to the Valley of Dry Bones, he made him walk backwards and forwards amongst the bones, assessing and surveying the scene. He saw that the, the bones were very dry. And I'd encourage you, if you've missed some of the teaching on the series, I'd highly recommend going back and listening again. It's been important for us to recognise and appreciate our reality. Part of that reality is how tough and dry and painful some of the journey can be and how, how painful some of that journey has been over the last few years. A year ago, in the beginning of 2023, our staff team had a goal for 2023 that by the end of the year, all of our locations would be in a healthy place. That implies that all of our locations have had to go through some stuff and have not necessarily been in the healthiest place. We've had to mourn what's been lost and we've had seasons where we've, we've really felt the need for us as a church to mourn. We've had to mourn what's been devastated, what's been dry, what's been barren, what's been tough. So I suppose as we come to the end of this series on Ezekiel, as we evaluate where we're at, I would say to you, if you've not taken the time to mourn, if you've not allowed yourself to stand and walk amongst the very dry bones and appreciate the reality, that's an important part of the journey to activation. We don't want to be an army full of wounds open wounds, operating out of them. We want to be people who, yeah, have, have scars, but the wounds have healed. We don't want to operate with open wounds. So do go back and assess, do I need to mourn for what has been lost? The great news is we don't have to do that on our own strength. Because God wants to raise us up from the ashes. <laughs> he wants to turn our mourning into dancing. He wants to bring life to what seemed dead. Arise, shine, the light has come. And remember, we're, we're a family. We stand together, together with each other. We bear each other's burdens and we rejoice together. So, so let's just, Lord, if, if there are people that, that I need to stand with in this, in this time, if there are people who, what I've just said, it really resonates, they, they just don't feel like they've come out of that, that place of mourning. I pray, Lord God, that you would move by the power of your spirit and that you would bring us a place, to a place of healing. You are the God of healing. You bring restoration. And we look to you for that. 
So as we evaluate and take a step back, I'd like to focus on three specific areas of the army as it comes to life, as we read in Ezekiel, and stands up on its feet. And the first area is us, Restore Community Church Family. I'm going to call us a battalion because we're a part of the army of God. But we are Restore Community Church. Okay? Um, and there are many battalions in the army. We're not the whole army, but we've got an extremely important role to play. We're only one battalion. There's hundreds, thousands more battalions, thousands more church families just like ours. As I've been just saying, this battalion is in the process of being activated. We feel that God is calling us to a year of activation. It's a significant time for this battalion. In September, this battalion celebrates a significant biblical number. It's our 40th birthday. 40 years. wonder what God is wanting to speak to us through that. 40 years is a significant number, isn't it, in the Bible? We're asking God what our birthday weekend should look like in September. We've already invited some key special people from history to join with us that weekend. And we'd love as many people who've been part of our history to be part of that. We appreciate that it's going to be, we anticipate that it's going to be a significant time for us. And we'd welcome your thoughts as we put some flesh on the bones, so to speak, of, of, our, of our birthday weekend in September. So if we go a little further back into Restore's history... 2023, you'll remember if you were around, um, we had the conviction that God was, was doing a new thing. In line with Isaiah 43, he's making roads in the desert, rivers in the wilderness. I don't think this word was given just to us, just to restore. I think many battalions, many church families have been hearing this same cry. Can you not perceive it? Look, I'm doing a new thing. And just to say, the news is getting brighter. The church, although it's been through some tough times, church life is beginning to grow in many areas. Attendance is starting to creep up. But we did have a major hit, as Restore Community Church and as all the other churches did as well, um, in 2019, 2020. Um, and I don't know if you remember, if you were around back in 2019, but Stuart Lee's a good friend of, of Restore Community Church, um, came and shared a prophetic word with us that he'd been given by God 20 years previously about revival coming to Great Britain. And God, in 2019, had finally given him the green light to share this word. Then lockdown hit. And so we jump forward to now, this moment as Restore Community Church, that we find ourselves in. As we come to the end of this teaching ser series on Ezekiel, I want to ask, what state are you in? A little look at where we are as a church. Well, what state are you in? As we've been asking God to breathe life into us, how are you doing? How's the soldier in the army? So let's evaluate, take a step back, and look at me. You can look at you. For me personally, um, I've kept a journal for a number of years and every now and again I find it really useful to evaluate what God's been saying to me personally. So I've been doing that recently over the last few months. Um, six years ago, my family and I were living in Zambia. Many of you know that. Um, sweet Zambia was our home. We'd found our place there and had 
to seriously consider whether we were going to stay there for good. However, it became clear uh, to us as a family that God was calling us back from Zambia. And it became clear in our mind, actually, that, that we were not just going back to our homeland, but that God was sending us to Loughton. We're, we're missionaries at heart. We love getting packed up and sent off. People seem to love packing us up and sending us off as well. It seems that happened, it seems to happen wherever we go when we're in, in Zambia. Our, our church family there packed us up and sent us back to Loughton. We did have a choice in it, but yeah. Just so you know, we are planning on sticking around for a bit, if you don't mind, that's all right. <laughs> Loughton's probably the least exotic place for God to send us. In fact, I remember a few, ta a few uh, years ago, pleading with God, oh God, anywhere but East London or Essex. But I'd have to say, I don't think to date I've ever felt a deeper conviction to be anywhere than the conviction I feel to be in Loughton for such a time as this. I feel like I'm in exactly the right place. Do you feel that? Do you feel you're called to the place you are right now? If you don't, if you're not sure, why don't you ask God to stir up a passion? To see his kingdom come in power in the place you are right now. Or why don't you ask him to send you to the place he wants you to go? In the process of us praying and preparing to come to Loughton, there were a few things that I clearly felt God was speaking to me at that time. And passions that God started to ignite or reignite in my heart. I haven't got time to go into loads of detail about what God was speaking at that time, but one of the things was about the raising up of an army and wanting to commit my life fully to that army. I remember being in my lovely garden in Zambia and having, we had a river and a stream and two ponds. I mean, it was pretty special. And I was having a moment with God where I realised that all I want to do with the rest of my life, was to work to see the kingdom come wherever I go. It was a real deep moment with God. I got a vision at that time of Loughton as one of many towns across our land where a revival was going to break out. The Towie town of Loughton was going to be famous, not because of it's Towie Central or, or Fake Town Central. It's going to be given a new name. going to be called Revival Town, like the old delirious song. Revival Town, that's what they're calling this place now. About that time, I was writing lots of songs, my own songs, that I felt God was, was placing on my heart. I, just, I had space to do that, and I wrote a song at that time which sums up what I felt God was speaking. And Lucy, 11-year-old Lucy, wrote the melody. The words to the song went like this. Jesus, send your spirit. Unite your church as one. We raise our voice together. We all join in one song. We will usher in your spirit. We'll claim this land as yours. And you will reign forever. Can you hear the battle call? Church, rise up. Church, wake up. Church, stand up. Church, let's go. So we landed back in the UK. I thought I was going to come back and hit the ground running, so to speak. Part of, part of what God was saying at that time was that I was to step away from my profession as a teacher, as an educator, and step into some sort of full-time Christian ministry. But I was held back from doing that by God. It, the, the time didn't seem to be right. I got a job as a teacher at Alderton Junior School, and that felt really right. I felt called into that. 
we became a fostering family and that felt really right. It felt like that was a call that God had had on our lives for, for many years. And so here we are nearly six years later. The reality of those convictions, those, those stirrings, those passions that God placed on my heart haven't faded. You'll be pleased to know. I've not grown weary. Uh, by God's grace, I've not had to deal with some of the stuff that, that leaders have had to deal with over the last few years. I've only been in the job five months. But I want to honour those leaders who have had to deal with and stand in that place, that gap. I want to honour them that they're still standing. Here in Restore, the churches in Leighton, the churches across the UK and across the world. I'm sure in their wildest imaginations as visionary leaders, they had no idea how tough the last few years were going to be. My passion to be part of this army, and I hope your passion to be part of this army, is stronger than it has ever been. And so in the past, when confusion at things not falling into place the way I'd imagined struck, and then, and then when the inhumane and unnatural reality of COVID struck, I know that God's ways were far above mine. And I'm so grateful for that. And so as I've been uh, surveying the scene of my own personal journey, I was interested to find an old letter in my journal that I wrote two years ago at the beginning of 2022 during our week of prayer and fasting. It was about unity. A passion that God has been stirring in my heart. It was written to the churches together in Latin Network, a group of church leaders uh, that we're connected to in Latin. I didn't end up sending the letter, it just didn't seem the right time. However, now that I'm an insider, <laughs> as a church leader in the network of churches together in Latin, I can, I can start to speak the sentiments of that letter to my good friends that I meet up with as we support each other and pray together each month. As a group of churches in Leiden, we're, we're serious about working out what unity for the gospel can look like and how we can love each other better as churches. We want to see each other blessed. I'd go as far as to say we're going to be working towards what it looks like to prefer each other to celebrate what God's doing in their midst. Imagine what church unity would look like if we were really more concerned about our non-restore brothers and sisters. Yeah, we, we, we long, God, to see your glory come here. Let your glory fall in this place. But let your glory fall in the church family down the road. Let your glory fall in the churches in my town. Let's continue to pray that in all our restore locations, the churches will be united as the body of Christ and be determined to preserve the bond of peace that Jesus prayed for. I want to encourage you. Unity among the churches is being preached and demonstrated all over the United Kingdom. You only have to listen to other preachers from other churches to hear that happening. I don't know whether you've noticed, people are being set on fire with a passion for unity. Jesus passionately prayed for unity. It's so important. In fact, I, I've become pretty convinced that it's the key element to seeing revival come in our land. And I just want to share something with you. I want you to, to listen to this. This, uh, this is an amazing, amazing prophetic word that was given by a chap called Smith Wigglesworth. An amazing name as well. I mean, Smith Wigglesworth. You've got to listen to someone called, called that. And, you, and this, this word was given in 1947. He's not alive, obviously, anymore. I'm sure some of you have maybe come across this, this, this prophetic word. 
It's called The Last Move. And it said, during the next few decades, there will be two distinct moves of the Holy Spirit across the church in Great Britain. The first move will affect every church that is open to receiving and will be characterised by the restoration of the baptism and gifts of the Holy Spirit. I think we've seen that. The second move of the Holy Spirit will result in people leaving historic churches and planting new churches, like Bristol Community Church. In the duration of each of these moves, the people who are involved will say, this is a great revival. But the Lord said, no, neither is this the great revival, but both are steps towards it. When the new church phase is on the wane, there will be evidence in the churches of something that has not been seen before, a coming together of those with an emphasis on the word and those with an emphasis on the spirit. When the word and the spirit come together, there will be the biggest move of the Holy Spirit that the nations and indeed the world has ever seen. It will mark the beginning of a revival that will eclipse anything that has been witnessed within these shores. Even the Wesleyan and the Welsh revivals of former years. The outpouring of God's Spirit will flow over from the United Kingdom to mainland Europe and from there will begin a, a missionary move to the ends of the earth. <laughs> Wow, we need to be alert to what God is doing and what he's going to do in this land. You know, I heard one prophetic word that, uh, last year that, said, that, that reminded us um, of something that was spoken. Um, when the Queen of England no longer sits on the throne, when she dies, revival is imminent. Now, obviously... I'm sharing a few different prophetic words today, not necessarily my own. Um, and we have to weigh prophetic words. We have to bring them before God. But I would suggest that a lot of these words fit in with each other. A lot of these words that have been spoken about revival coming to our land seem to fit in together like a jigsaw. So that brings us to the third part of assessing the army. Assessing the army across this land. We've assessed the battalion, we've assessed the soldier. Let's just assess where the army is right now. Are we ready? Are we ready? If revival comes, are we ready? Last year I decided to take a sabbatical from a job that I didn't have. <laughs> my, my brother found this hilarious. My brother's a Church of England vicar and he was having a sabbatical. I said, oh yeah, I'm going to have a sabbatical as well. He was, what are you having a sabbatical from? I was like, wow. Well, just think it'd be good to have a sabbatical before I start the job. <laughs> anyway, he still finds it hilarious that I had a sabbatical before, before I even started doing this job. Anyway, it was great. It was really good. I started this job from a place of Sabbath rest. I went to a lot of conferences around the UK throughout the course of last year. And one of the conferences was called Wildfires. You might have heard of it. It started in 2018 with a passion to unite the church to contend for the next great awakening. The strap line for wildfires, contending for the next great awakening. So that's what it's all about. I had a significant time there. It felt like revival. Revival is an interesting word, isn't it? It's a word that, that sometimes seems a little bit abstract. I had a really useful definition of revival recently. Jonathan Edwards, not the triple jumper, Jonathan Edwards, the, the theologian, um, describes, described revival 
as an intensification and an acceleration of the normal working of the Holy Spirit. I find that really useful. It's nothing special, it's nothing that we're trying to strive towards. It's just the normal working of the Holy Spirit. But there's an intensification and there's an acceleration to that working of the Holy Spirit. There was a very clear sense at the, at the wildfires uh, conference of the need for the church to go through a, to go through a, um, a work, I suppose, of, of consecration before God. There was a sense that, this, that, that these wildfires, the wildfire that we were experiencing at the conference won't be contained to a conference. That the, the Holy Spirit spreads like wildfire. And that the army of, the, of God is going to look like wildfire across the land. We're going to wildfires as a church this year. Please do make sure you check your diary and get along if you can. It's going to be a significant time for us as, as the church, but also for Restore Community Church. And it's going to be great just to spend a bit, a bit of time getting to know each other there. 23rd to the 26th of August, bank holiday weekend. Make sure you're there. Around the same time that wildfires was happening last year, another key spokesperson and movement that's got my attention started to gain momentum. Um, you might have heard of Dr. Jonathan Odiedi. He's the convener of the National Day of Prayer and Worship, and he's part of the Churches Together in England network. And he's been consistently speaking words as part of these, these organisations of prophecy and encouragement and continues to do so. In May 2023 he, he issued a prophetic declaration and part of that prophetic declaration he said we, we proclaim that there will be an upsurge in conversions to Christ, prodigals coming back to the church, an explosion in church planting and reports of revival in many places. There's a prayer movement that Jonathan is leading it happens weekly on Zoom. I'd encourage you to log in and, and join um, every Thursday, 7pm. I think it's on YouTube as well. Um, it's called Prayer Across the Isles. And it's so encouraging to pray with people from all over the UK on a huge Zoom prayer meeting. Hundreds of people on this Zoom prayer meeting. We took part in the, the Shine Your Light event at Christmas that they coordinated. And there's going to be a number of events coming up this year aimed at uniting and coordinating Christians across this nation to bring the light of Jesus Christ into our land. A major message that Dr. Jonathan has been giving the church, to church leaders is this call to extraordinary prayer and fasting. And there's, there's significant opportunities to commit ourselves afresh to prayer and fasting. You'll notice that we as Restore um, are, are up in our game when it comes to prayer and fasting. We feel that, that's, that we need to respond to this, that God is asking us and calling us as a community to pray and fast. So every first Wednesday of the month, we're going to start each first Wednesday with 6am to 7am prayer and finish each day 7.30 to 9 PM with worship in our different locations. And there's absolutely no coincidence that God's been calling other church families around this nation to extraordinary prayer and fasting. The church is rising up and responding to God's invitation. Now, I mentioned um, Stuart Lee's coming to restore in 2019 and, and sharing a prophetic word about a coming revival. But that God didn't permit him to share it for 20 years. I've been reading a book recently and in this book there's a chap called Simon Breaker who's part of um, the, the British Isles Council of Prophets. 
He had a similar experience. He received a word from God, but was asked by God not to share it until 2020. He had to wait 20 years as well before sharing this prophetic word. The, the word was quite detailed, but I just want to share a little bit of it with you. I felt the Lord speak. I will not bless that which is born of the arm of the flesh. This new move will be shapeless, yet structured like a flood, unstoppable and alive. Like the flames in a fire, my people will dance the dance of the redeemed across the nations. In the midst of apparent desolation, a new thing shall be born. The old man-made structures shall come crashing to the ground, but my faith-filled bride shall arise dancing out of the ashes. It's time to join the dance. Sounds a bit like some of the things that fit with what God has been saying to us in Restore Community Church. Like flames in a fire, a new thing shall be born. Arise, dancing out of the ashes. This is the army that we're called to be a part of. I mentioned at the beginning the sound of the army. It's different. It's the sound of joy. It's the sound of praise. The army of the Lord is rising up. The army looks different. It looks like wildfire. It takes the form of a flood. It will be characterised by unity, love and dancing. I'm not going to dance for you now, don't worry. But who can stand against an army that looks like that? Who can stand against an army that sounds like that? Restore Community Church. It's time to rise up. It's time to wake up. It's time to stand up. Rise up, army of the Lord. Stand on your feet, army of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, we read that when you have done everything to stand, stand firm. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Are we ready? Can you hear the battle call? Jesus is calling up his army. Why don't you, wherever you are, stand on your feet? Let us take a stand. And when we've done everything to stand, stand firm. We need to make sure that we're not naively stepping into what God is calling us into. We need to be ready. We need to fit ourselves with some of these things that we read of in Ephesians. So let's just stand. Wherever you are right now, whether, in, whether you're in your, in your living room, whether you're um, in a, gathered together with a, a group of people, let's just take a stand right now and let's respond to this call that Jesus is giving his church. I'm going to invite you just maybe to hold out your hands. 
And I'm just going to read the words that Jesus is speaking. Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise. Come, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. Jesus. We stand, we come with you, I come with you. I want to be part of your army. We as Restore Community Church want to be part of your army. And we stand in response to the call that you have given us at this time.